Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Hello, hello! Welcome back to my channel all about cross stitch, quilting, knitting, and whatever else I get up to um, in my crafty life. <laughs> Um, I thought I would kind of introduce the video this way because, um, you know, I started this channel as a floss tube channel, uh, because I started this in 2020 during the pandemic and I was cross stitching nonstop while we were all stuck in our houses and I was watching a ton of floss tube and I started filming floss tube episodes and I've always shown you guys, um, kind of everything I craft on every couple of weeks or every week when I used to film these. And I know that maybe my videos are not the most traditional floss tubes and I have thought about renaming them to like craft diaries or I don't know, just Elizabeth Ann can stitch episodes. Um, but yes, if you are new here, hi, I'm Liz, Elizabeth Ann, and I mainly do cross stitch, quilting, sewing, knitting. Um, sometimes I paint, it's been a long time. Uh, sometimes I crochet, it's been a long time. Sometimes I do wool applique, sometimes I do EPP. Basically anything you can make with your two hands that's pretty. <laughs> I want to make it. So yeah, that's a little short intro. I did get quite a few new subscribers off of last week's video, which was a recap of my girls weekend with my friend Liz, hello from Liz Matthews, and our trip to Phoenix to visit the Attic Needlework store. And welcome, anyone who's new who found me through that video. <laughs> I did not realize how popular that little video would be, and now it makes me want to plan a lot more trips to a lot more stores so I can show you guys around because you guys enjoyed it and I super enjoyed it. So <laughs> I like have that in my head. I really want to go, I need to just sign up for Stitch West at some point. Maybe I shall try to do that next year because I really want to go to Salt Lake City and see all of their quilting and cross stitch stores because I feel like it's kind of a hot spot for really good crafty shopping. Um, anyways, let's see, what have I been up to for two weeks? I went to Arizona. Uh, if you missed the last video, I will have it linked down below. You can hear all about that trip. I'm not going to reshow any of the haul or anything because I went through it all in the last video. Um, other than that, it was my nephew, uh, Charlie, my oldest nephew, Charlie's eighth birthday yesterday, and we had a little family party for him. He looks like a teenager already. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, when did he get so old? Um, which I know eight isn't old, but he's like my little baby. And, um, that was really fun. He is like, he's obsessed. I got him a Nike hoodie and he's like obsessed with it and hasn't taken it off. Um and it's very cute. So <laughs> I'm glad he enjoyed it. It can be hit or miss trying to buy clothes for kids, but he loves Nike stuff. So he loved it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention in my attic recap video is that Liz got me this awesome cross stitcher t-shirt. And um, I had worn my pajamas in the last video and then forgot to bring the t-shirt in there with me to show you. But super, super cute. So I had to bust it out for my new video. Um, Let's see. Other than work and trip, I've been watching a lot of football. It's football season. I talked about that in my last floss tube. Happy to hear that there are so many other cross stitch crafty football fans out there. There's really nothing I love more than like a cozy, it's 95 degrees, but like a cozy Sunday where you have a craft project in your couch and there's snacks and maybe some chips and queso. <laughs> And just like full relaxing on the couch all day with football and a craft project. So that's my plan for after I film this. Yeah, do I have anything coming up in the next two weeks? Actually, yes. Yeah. So my normal schedule is to film every other week on Sunday. But two weeks from now, I will actually be in Bentonville, Arkansas um, on another little girl's trip. But not little girl's trip. On a... <laughs> 
<laughs> girl strip with a few of my non-crafty friends. Uh, one of my best friends moved to Bentonville um, from Austin uh, sometime over the summer. I guess in June she moved. And so a few of my friends and I were going to go up and visit her. We have an Airbnb and just going to do a bunch of you know, um, eating, drinking, and hiking, I think. <laughs> so, but part of that trip, I was like, why did I start talking about this? Well, one reason is because my video two weeks from now will be delayed. I'm not sure when, I'll figure it out later, but I'll do an episode. It'll just be probably a couple days later um, than usual. And the other reason I was gonna mention it is because I am going to try to go shop at the Silver Needle in Tulsa, Oklahoma while I'm up there. So from Austin, there are no direct flights to Fayetteville, which is like the closest airport to Bentonville. And um, maybe there's one, but it's like Spirit Airlines and it's like once a week on a weird day. Like basically there was no direct option. So, but we do have Southwest here, which we have direct to Tulsa. And I think that's like, two hours from Bentonville. So one of my friends and I are on the same flight. We're flying up into Tulsa. And I think it's Thursday, October 5th. I'll put it on the screen. Um, I'm just mentioning it. So if you're in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area and you want to come across it, shop with me. <laughs> I think that I'm going to be cutting it close. I actually might need to email the store and ask them, well, one, confirm that they're open on like according to their out what their hours say on that Thursday, because I think my flight lands in Tulsa at four and I think the store closes at six. So I think best case scenario, I might get one hour or a little less <laughs> to shop. Um, and then they're closed on Sunday when we go home. So I know I won't be able to shop on Sunday. Um, anyways. <laughs> So I'm like fingers crossed hoping that I'll get to go actually see the Silver, Le Silver Needle in person. Um, I've heard so many good things about that store and anytime I am near a big cross stitch store I want to go to it. So that's why my one of my friends and I are going to go up a day early on Thursday because I really want to try to shop at the Silver Needle. Anyways, I'll probably post more about that on my Instagram page as that gets closer a couple weeks from now. Um, but if you're in the area and you have any tips or I need to look up there, I need to call them or email them and make sure that they're actually open till six on Thursday. And that if I bust in there at five, 5.15, they're not gonna hate me um, for wanting to do a real quick shop. Um, okay, <laughs> let's talk about stitching. I do not have any fully finished objects for you this week, but I have a finish. <sighs> Um, I showed you this in last week's video of my attic recap. Liz and I both picked out this chart by Ink Circles called Arranging Cacti. And um, Liz talked about it in her video about how basically I had picked it up and then she was looking at it and saw it in my cart and was like, well, I need it. Um, what's even funnier is that I... The night we got into Phoenix, I was just like on my phone looking up like directions and how long it was going to take us in the morning and to get to the store. And I was looking at the Google image. You know, like when you get on Google Maps and you look up a store, if customers have uploaded images of the store, you can like slot, like scroll through them. And so I was scrolling through all the customer images of the attic and I saw this chart on their wall. And I was like, oh, how cute is that? It's cactus. I didn't know it was in ink circles, but I kind of was like, oh, I think that looks like an ink circles chart. And I thought I had pointed it out to Liz on my phone, but maybe she doesn't remember that or maybe I didn't, I don't remember. But when we got to the store, I saw it on the wall and was like, okay, I have to get that. It's like cactus, very Southwest. Um, and I just thought it would be a fun trip memento. And Liz and I, like we got a little tour of the store from Jean for like the first half hour, but then we like split up and just deep dived into every section. So we were shopping like independently of each other. So that's why like then later she saw that I had shoved this in my cart and was like, oh wait, I need it too. Um, anyways, so it was like a very impromptu little friend stitch along that we did with this chart as a little memento for our trip. And um, I watched Liz's recap video a few days ago when she posted hers and she talked about doing kind of a half version and adding some personalization to commemorate the trip and turn it into an ornament. And I was like, that's what I want to do too. So that's what I did. And I finished mine. Here is arranging cacti. 
So as you can see, this cactus is like the center part of, or the center point of the chart. And so um, we both just did everything to the right. And then she charted out some personalization options for us. And I know she said she was very curious about which one I went with. And as you can see, Liz, <laughs> I went with the small cross-stitched year and our initials. And I did mine in the dark green um, in dive is the thread I used for mine. I thought about using the brown that's outlines that outlines everything else in the chart, but I don't know, I kind of wanted to change it up and I thought the green was pretty and it made it slightly more subtle, like the lettering. So I stitched mine on Seraphim Fabrics 40 Count Bees Knees. And I think this is like the perfect sandy gold kind of desert color. I can't remember what the called for fabric was, um, but it doesn't matter. I didn't have it. So I just was like, what's the kind of most golden sandy color that I have? And it was Bees Knees. So this came out about three inches high by two and a half inches tall on 40 count. So this is gonna be the perfect little ornament size. So cute. I may turn it into a little pillow for my pillow bowl, or I might mount it and actually make it a Christmas ornament. I haven't fully decided, but I love this one. Yay, so happy to have this one done. Okay, let's talk about whips. I have um, my birthday start. This is Margarita Schrapfer by Jeanette Douglas. And this is one I spotted at Nashville Needlework Market and had to have. And I kitted mine up with the DMC floss and decided that I would start this for my 40th birthday back in June. I think, I can't remember my hashtag. I'll have to put it on the screen for you. Um, I think there's a few people stitching along with me and I hadn't worked on this one in about a month and I wanted to pull it back out. So I took this one with me on our trip and I really only worked on it one morning. So I don't have a ton of progress, but I still wanted to show it to you. So here is my progress on Margarita. I finished up that bird down in the center and started on the matching basket over here. So yeah, I probably only spent about two and a half hours um, stitching on this one. So it's really not too different from the last time you saw it, but I love it. I am stitching this on a 36, no, I think it's a 40 count um, Lakeside Linen Vintage Fawn. And it is the called for fabric and I happen to have it in my stash, which is awesome. And I am using all of the DMCs. This was charted, I think with Olivera Swa silks, but um, it was a lot of colors and I decided to just do DMC and not spend the money on silks. Even though now I'm kind of regretting it only not because the, I don't love the colors. I think these colors are beautiful substitutes for the silks. I honestly think it looks great. <laughs> it's just that there's another project in here that I'm stitching with silks. And I just love the experience of stitching with silk thread. Like it's just so smooth and shiny um, that it makes me just want to stitch everything in silk, but that's unrealistic. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, oh, maybe I should have gotten the silks for this. It's fine. Obviously I'm not restarting it. I've got all the DMC and I've got about a third of it done. So we will keep rolling. Um, let's see, I stitch one strand over two on anything 36 or 40 count. So this is one strand. And I told you my fabric. I'm forgetting how to do this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's all I need to tell you about Margarita. This is another project that I took with me to Phoenix, but I didn't actually work on it while I was there. But the night, I think I got home around 7 p.m. last Saturday night, and I started working on this one that evening. And on Sunday, I finished my Whipgo goal. So I am working on Little House Needleworks Early Americans. And in particular, I was working on the center block number five, Freedom. And this was um, my last whip go goal for September that I needed to get done, which was to complete this square on Early Americans. And I did it and it was super quick. It just took me a few hours of stitching. So now here is what Early Americans is looking like. Hope that's all on screen. I really, really like 
my new camera. Um, it's not even new anymore. I think I got it a year and a half ago, but I've been using it more this summer, like finally teaching myself how some of the settings work. I got like a fancy lens so that it creates this kind of like I'm in focus and the background's slightly out of focus. I think they call it bokeh. Is that what it's called? Bokeh? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but when I film with my phone, I can just like see everything really easily. And this camera has like a little flip out screen that's right to the side. If you're ever wondering why I'm looking off to the side, it's because I'm trying to see the little screen. But I have like my ring light and my microphone and there's just like a lot that's kind of in the way of the screen. So I can't always make 100% sure that everything's on camera and in focus. I think there's like external monitors you can plug into these cameras so that you can have like a repositionable I don't know, I'm talking too much about tech equipment, but why did I start talking about that? I don't know. I was trying to make sure this was on camera. Um, here we go. <laughs> I'll uh, give you a close up of that center square there. I am stitching this one on 36 count. It's a Zweigert fabric because it's got the telltale orange, um, the orange thread. And I, it appears hand dyed to me, but I have no idea um, who the dyer is or what the color is. I didn't write any of that information down. I bought this fabric before I was filming floss tube episodes. And I am using all of the called for over dyed cotton threads, one strand over two. And this is my oldest whip. I think I talked about that last week. So this was from 2019. Um, I don't think it's going to get done this year because it will, it is on my whip go board again. So I will stitch another one of these squares at some point in the next couple of months, but, um, then I still have four squares left. So <laughs> we'll see. Not sure when this one will get completed, but I love it and it will slowly get there. So that's early Americans. Okay, so my next whip is a new start, and if you watch the attic recap video, it is probably not a shocking new start. <laughs> I started my floral motif sampler. Uh, this is the project that I completely kitted up with the attic's silk conversion while I was there in the store, and I love it, and I could not resist starting this. So this is what I have stitched on the most um, during these past six or seven days since I filmed that recap video. I love it. Here is what mine looks like. Uh, oh my God. So pretty. Um, so you can see I got a pretty, pretty good start on it. This is a big chart and this is almost the first page finish out of six pages. So about a sixth of the way through. Um, I did briefly consider only stitching on this for the rest of September, for Sampler September. I didn't really make any Sampler September plans this year. I have in the past, because I think last year it was Christmas Garden by Blackbird. That was the one I was my focus piece for Sampler September. I was able to get it done. Um, I knew I wouldn't be able to get this to a finish with when I started it, which I think was like the 17th or 18th of the month. So I knew I wasn't like, I was gonna get this done in two weeks, but I kind of was like, maybe this will just be my focus piece. But then I started the arranging cacti piece and got that done really quickly. And then I have other stuff I wanna work on too. So uh, this is definitely gonna stay out because I'm obsessed with stitching on it, but you know, it's gonna get mixed in with all my other whips. So I am stitching this on 36 count tabby cat fabric um the color is called just the ticket this is my first time um with i've ever bought any or used any tabby cat fabric and it's gorgeous it's very kind of golden neutral and i am using um mostly dinky dyes and belsoi and a few gum nuts um silk flosses and i believe carolyn from the attic put the uh conversion together uh, I forgot to ask her, but she did pull it for me out of their file drawer. So if you are interested in stitching it the same way I am, you can call or email the attic and they can um, help you get all the floss you need for this. I'm sure it's, well, I know it's absolutely gorgeous in the overdyed cottons that it calls for because I saw the model and that's what sold me on it. But 
I just really wanted to do an attic silk conversion and I love dinky dye silks um, and these colors are just so gorgeous. So yay, that is my uh, floral motif sampler. Okay, let's move on to some sewing. I have been sewing the past few days and I have been working on my cousin Abby's baby quilt. And uh, I have a deadline. <laughs> Her baby shower is next Sunday. So I actually have a quilting appointment on Wednesday this week to get her baby quilt quilted. So that means I need to have the top and the backing done. And I am on my way there. I last night finished sewing together all of the rows for this quilt. So I just brought one over to show you. But here is what one of the rows looks like. Um, I absolutely love it. I actually, I think I have a picture of the block layout or like a small segment of the blocks laid out so you can get a better idea of what it's going to look like. And I think I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but I am doing a full end-to-end -end quilt tutorial on this quilt. In the past, I've done kind of like multiple videos um, over time of how I put together quilts. And I just thought it would be fun to try to do like kind of an all-in-one contained video. So um, I started filming for this about a month ago when my nephew Andy and I went to the quilt store to pick out the fabric. And then I filmed all of the steps so far from getting everything cut out and sewn together. And I just need to film myself sewing the rest of these rows together and then quilting it and binding it and yeah then I'll be able to publish the video. So I am gonna guess let's see the baby shower is next weekend so maybe maybe a week after well let's see will that be when I'm out of town that will be I don't know I'm, <laughs> I'm going out of town too much um so I'm gonna say two to three weeks look for a quilt video from me on this and um, it's super simple. I just made two different quilt blocks, put them together. I am gonna give you all the instructions to make it exactly how I make it. And then I've been contemplating maybe putting together like a very cheap PDF in my Etsy shop that has other sizes of this quilt, like with different block sizes and have like all the fabric requirements. That way, if you don't wanna do quilt math, um, I do it all for you, but I've never done anything like that before. So I have to figure out if I can really, if I really feel confident in being able to build a pretty looking PDF that's worth a few dollars of people paying for, you know what I mean? Cause that's something I haven't done before. So I have to play around with that. So don't hold me to that, but at least um, a tutorial for making the baby size version will be coming at you in a few weeks. So yeah. That is what I've been sewing on. Okay, I have also been doing a good bit of knitting since you last saw me. Um, knitting is so easy when I travel and I'm on planes and in hotel rooms. Um, Cause I can, I feel like I can just knit anywhere. I don't really need good lighting to knit. So uh, I have some knitting projects to show you. I'm also so delighted that Liz asked me to show her how to knit again. Um, she had done it in the past, but didn't really remember. And I was like, yes, please. I would love nothing more than to sit on this couch and not move for three hours while I show you how to knit. And that's what we did one night. <laughs> it was great. Um, I have been working on Rob's, my husband's Muscleboro hat. And um, I don't, I really only put a few rounds into this, so. I'll show it to you, but there has not been much progress since you last saw this. I did, however, switch to 16 inch circulars. I was using 12 inch circulars, and I think I told you guys how I wasn't really sure how I felt about them. They were kind of hard to knit on for me. So I just got on Amazon and got a 16 inch set, and I'm much happier with these 16 inch. It just goes much quicker for me. So, yep, that's where I'm at with Rob's Muscleboro hat. Oh, I am knitting this. I always want to say stitching. I am knitting this with a Sweet Georgia Tough Love sock or something love sock. They're sock. And it's the color charcoal. I should have started with this. I do have a Ravelry page and I am doing my best to create project pages for all of my projects. 
I am 100% sure that I have a project page for everything I'm about to show you. I will link my Ravelry page in the description box below. And on those pages, you can get all the info about yarn, needle size, pattern. So in case I forget to mention something or you want to see more notes and pictures, uh, yeah, I will link my Ravelry project pages below. I do have um, an almost knitting finish. I have one sock of a pair of socks done. And this is my Barbie Land uh, Bumblebee Acres Coquette Sock hand dyed yarn. And I knit myself a pair of little shorty ankle socks that I showed you in my last video. And my sister had asked about knitting about bar or taking the yarn, having the rest of it to knit her daughter some ski socks. And I was like, why don't I just knit her some ski socks? So I have one of them done. And it is the craziest shape. <laughs> look at this. How crazy does this look? Um, it is a two by two rib with contrast heels and toes and a little contrast at the cuff. Sorry, I try to keep my face out of it so the camera will focus. I did follow a pattern for this. This is the Pearl Soho Toddler Socks. And uh, my sister wanted them to be six inches tall from the ankle so that they would go up above her ski boots. And um, the part I'm worried about is this foot because it just looks so fat here. She's so little, she's three, but she's a small three-year-old. Um, so I'm slightly worried that the foot is too big and I don't really have her here to try them on. Uh, they live, my sister and her husband and kids live in Dubai. So they'll be here in early December for a few weeks until Christmas. So I'm trying to decide. I have thought about, I mean, this foot took like I don't even know, a couple of hours to knit. It's so small. So I really could just rip back up to, you know, the heel and the ankle and try and do more decreases to make the foot a little bit smaller. But I don't know. I really want her to try them on because maybe they're totally fine. You know, like I don't really, I don't know. I haven't seen her feet in a while. <laughs> Mel, if you watch this, let me know. Like, does this look, does this look too big for her foot? I don't know, we'll figure it out. But that's also kind of why I haven't cast on the second one, but I need to, I need to just cast on um, and do my all my two by two ribbing and then figure out if I wanna change something on the second one's foot to see if it looks better and then maybe rip back and change this one. So it's like a finish for now, but I might end up ripping back and adjusting the foot on this. But yeah, that's a sock I knit. I think I finished this maybe a couple days after we got home. I this is what I was knitting on mostly um, while we were in our hotel room. Another project I have been working on a lot, uh, mostly on the couch at home. I did not take this one with me. This is my boyfriend scarf by Absolute Knits, I believe. And I am using the most gorgeous hand-dyed Hedgehog Fibers Merino Aran Weight um, wool. Superwash wool, I believe. So pretty. And I am now on my third of three total balls for this scarf. So I'm in the home stretch. I'm in the last third. <laughs> and here is what it's looking like. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Um, I actually put a progress marker in it. So my last video I had knit up this far, which was about, I don't know, three feet or so. And so since my last video, I have knit from this progress marker all the way up. So like another foot and a half, I am making some progress. Uh, these three balls, they're all hand dyed. So I think they're all different dye lots, but I think the yarn and the colors are busy enough that you can't really tell. I mean, I can tell because I'm staring at it so much, but let's see, up to about right here is like the first ball of yarn. And then it kind of starts, you can see it kind of start to change a little bit um, for the second ball of yarn, but it's not that bad. And then I have noticed, let's see, I started, oh, I'm only, I'm barely into my third ball. So I only have about two inches at the top of that third one, but I can tell it like kind of changed again. But I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait 
um, to have this one done and be able to wear it um, on our next trip to Indiana in December when it's cold. So it's so squishy and comfy. I love this. Um, I just realized I've been telling you guys the patterns. I haven't been telling you needle size. Again, I have all this linked in my Ravelry project pages. Um, what are these? These are size eight, US eight knitting needles. Is that a 4.0 or a 5.0? Again, I meant to look all this up. I think it's a 5.0. Uh, <laughs> I will get better. I am still thinking about doing some knitting specific videos. Uh, knitters call their videos podcasts and guys, I cannot get on board with that. Um, <laughs> I understand that there are a lot of podcasts that publish videos on YouTube, but the whole point of a podcast is that it's an audio medium. You don't have to have the visual to be able to enjoy a podcast. And if I'm going to be showing you my knitting, I feel like you have to have the visual component. It's not just something you would listen to in the car. You wouldn't listen to me talk about knitting without being able to see the projects, right? So I'm, <laughs> but I understand that like, every single knitter on YouTube calls their videos podcasts. So if I want my videos to be like in the search algorithm, I probably have to use the word podcast somewhere in there. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna be calling them knitting videos for now because whatever. That's like, I feel like I've talked a lot about like the logistics of filming and YouTube today. Um, but yes, the, I am, I do want to do knitting specific episodes on my channel to deep dive into what I'm knitting, previous finishes, uh, plans for knitting, because I haven't ever really dove into plans. I've shown you guys some haul, but I don't know. I, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about. I have a spot in my bedroom. I think I might film it and maybe that's a project for next weekend. We'll find out. Um, Okay, so anyways, this is my boyfriend's scarf. I'm obsessed with it and it honestly will probably be done in the next two weeks if I work on it because I just like keep, keep this right next to my spot on the couch and anytime I want something super easy and colorful to work on, I grab it. It is way too big for the bag I have it in, which is um, my, one of my little drawstring bags. So like basically I roll up the scarf and then shove it in this bag. <laughs> And here's how it doesn't fit. And then I just like pull it and um, I call it good. <laughs> I really need to make myself some more knitting project bags. Or I could stop starting new knitting projects, but making bags sounds easier and more fun. <laughs> the last knitting project that I have to show you guys is my DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mowry. And this is what we're looking like. Electric pink. <laughs> I, um, let's see, I do have a progress marker in this one. Let me turn it around and I'll show you. So right there is my progress marker. So I've made about an inch and a half or almost two inches of progress since my last video. Um, I, since I split for the sleeves, I have just been in stockinette island on the body. I have, I just measured, I have a five inches from the underarms done. So I think this pattern calls for knitting 10 inches below the underarm and then four inches of ribbing. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, I have five more inches of stockinette at least. I probably need mine longer. I am a tall girl. I have a longer torso. So I will probably end up knitting this longer than the pattern says, but yeah. I have not tried this one on in the last two weeks, so I don't have an updated photo of me wearing it, but in another inch or so, I probably will take it off and try it on again, just because I am slightly concerned about the fit. I think I told you guys the armholes felt slightly snug, but this also has not been blocked. And so the neckline feels super high and tight, not tight, but super high right now. And I've seen finished pictures of people's sweater on Ravelry. And I feel like once it's blocked, this neckline kind of opens up and it kind of like relaxes through the yoke a little bit more. So I'm not too concerned. Um, another thing I want to do and I might do in this next week is 
go ahead and pick up my armhole and arm stitches and start one of the sleeves just because I feel like it would be an easier determination of like size and fit if I'm able to try this on next and have one of the armholes and sleeves started. So like I really know like how the sleeve, how the armhole is going to fit. Um, and I may even do kind of like a little blocking of it, like put it on tubing or waist yarn and actually block it and make sure um, that it is going to fit before I finish it. But yeah, that is where I'm at. This is Madeline Tosh sport weight yarn in the color Pop Rocks. And I am using US 4 needles for the body. And I think I had to use US 2 for the ribbing. That was what it called for like two needle sizes down on the ribbing size four for the body and then it calls for one size bigger on the arms so I have a U.S. size five for the arms so yeah that has been the big knitting project that I've been working on lately and I really really would love this done not urgently I like I said it's like 95 degrees outside right now it was over 100 yesterday so like I'm not wearing sweaters anytime soon um we can't really wear sweaters here, like thick sweaters until maybe the end of December, but more likely January, February. January, February are our coldest months. And I still think we average a high around 50 and a low, you know, mid thirties, low forties. Um, it just does not get <laughs> that cold here. So, but whatever, I love knitting. I don't care. I'll wear these once a year. It'll be fine. Uh <laughs> Although it would be kind of nice. Maybe if I had this done in December, I could take this with me to Indiana and wear it while we're cold in Indiana. And then I'll put on my crazy colorful scarf with it and I'll just be a walking knitting advertisement. So that is my knitting progress over the last two weeks. Okay, so that is all of the crafting that I've been doing the last two weeks. So I have a little bit of happy mail and a lot of bit of haul. Uh, I'm not even doing the attic haul. That was in the last video, but boy, do I still have a lot of haul to show you. Um, I think the past few videos I've been like, oh, I haven't been shopping much. Look at me. And now I'm like, oops, I've bought everything. So I'll show it to you. Um, the first bit of happy mail though came from Tina, who I got to meet in Arizona last week. And um, she sent me this beautiful card that looks handmade. So lovely, so lovely. Thank you, Tina. And she made for me a um, an ort container. So, or like a little, yeah, like a little tray to, to stash your orts and stuff in um, when you're stitching. And it looks like this, beautiful fabric, and it has these snaps in the corner. And so it can store flat, which makes it great for packing in your stitching bag. And then you just squeeze the corners and then you have a super cute little container to stash all your raggedy threads before you toss them. Um, I love it. So thank you, Tina. Okay, and then last weekend while I was out of town, I got a big box from the Fat Quarter Shop of some of their new items. And I wanted to share them with you. I have the new Be In My Bonnet stitch cards that are by Lori Holt, and this is set R very very cute fall themed little stitches um they sent me a new quilt pattern that is called foxtrot super cute um that it's an it's so emma quilt pattern foxtrot they sent me the new um the newest installment of the chicken club which is number eight and it's called myrtle and she has a little chick with her it's so cute look at that little myrtle. Um, then they have a new stackables for August and this one um, is like bee themed. Little honeycombs and bees. Very cute. And they have a new pattern in their sign series called Happy Fall. Very pretty pumpkin spice colors. Um, and then they have a new a chart in their little ornament series that they've been doing. I think they've done 4th of July, Christmas, and Valentine's. And so now they have autumn days ornaments. 
And these are the little circular ornaments that they do in these little pie tin finishes. They're so cute. I really like this series a lot. Um, and they've got, let's see, I'm looking at the back. They've got like pumpkin pie, the mushroom. Um, oh, the little Canadian. Uh, is that like for Canadian Thanksgiving? The little Canadian cup. That's cute. The acorn. Yeah. Oh, the pine cone. Cute. Anyways, these are super cute. So that. Um, and then they sent me, they have a new product, which, oh, it's crinkly. Uh, let me take it out of this bag so I can show it to you. It is gigantic. Um, it's called the Big Hexy Project Bag by Lori Holt, Be In My Bonnet. Carry everything you need for stitching on the go. You can put design boards up to 18 inches square in here. Quilting rulers, cutting mats. Sorry, I'm reading the label. You can put, you could put your house in here. Um, <laughs> this is their giant new bag. And it's that same material that they do um, the kind of cross stitch pieces on that like, I think Shepherd's Bush has designed a bunch of patterns for. So it's that same kind of holy mesh material, but just in a big giant size. And this one has a zipper top on it. So it's like a big, huge tote bag. It does have a flat bottom on it. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, so it does have a nice flat bottom on it. You can fit so much in here. So if you need like a retreat bag that carries everything, um, this looks like a pretty good one. So big hexy bag. And then the last thing in the box I was most excited about, it is their new Simply Jelly Rolls by It's So Emma. And this is a new spiral bound quilt book that they just published. And in fact, um, if I can find it, I think it was just a couple weeks ago, they did a whole trunk show on the Fat Quarter Shops sewing channel, quilting channel, um, of all of the quilts in this book. And it was really fun to see them uh, in person, you know, um, because there's a lot of really, really cute quilts in here. And there's several I actually really want to make. Let me show you the one that I feel like is high on my list. These are all jelly rolls, so all two and a half inch squares. Of course, you can just cut your own two and a half inch strips or buy a jelly roll. Um, okay, this one is called Sourdough Quilt. I think it's the last one in the book. Uh, let me show you. Wait, do they have a full picture? Well, I'll just show you the quilt layout. But this is kind of the layout. So it's like kind of these like different sized rectangles, but I feel like it shows off the fabric of like whatever fabric you use really well and uses minimal or probably about, it's probably about half and half between prints and background. That's kind of my preferred ratio. I don't love quilts that are like 80% background and 20% printed fabric. I like a better half and half or heavier on the prints, less on the background. That's kind of my preference. Um, so anyways, I just think this is super cute. Let me show you. They have pictures of the quilts made up, but it's like the artsy folded <laughs> style where you don't really see the whole quilt. But here's their like glamour shot of this quilt. Really cute, really simple. It just reminds me of the, the jelly roll quilt I just made, the uh, Madeline quilt that I did a few weeks, months. How long was it? Was it in June? I don't remember. I think it was in June. Uh, <laughs> and here's actually a shot of a lot of the quilts in the book on the back page. I hope that's in focus. But anyways, I just want to say a big thank you to the Fat Quarter Shop for sending me their new items. I will have all of these linked in the description box below in case you're interested in picking any of these up. Okay, let's do some haul. Um, where do I want to start? I placed a one, two, three stitch order because the attic was actually out of two of the flosses I needed for the silk conversion um, for the floral motif sampler. So I ordered those, they're already kitted up. Uh, but then I kind of went through their Moda fabric section. Um, one, two, three stitch is now based in Dallas and they also have now started carrying Moda fabric. I don't know if that's related, but Moda is based out of Dallas and I know 123 Stitch is now in Dallas, but either way, they have now added a huge Moda fabric section to their website, which is really nice. And you can sometimes find some good deals in there. Um, so I always kind of like have a peek through when I'm shopping cross stitch. I'm like, what do I need from the Moda fabrics? Um, and I found this fabric yard or fabric line. Let me see if I can find the name of it real quick. 
It's called Here Kitty Kitty by Stacy Itsu. And um, I wanted knitting bags that were cat themed. And this, this fabric line is perfect. So I got this one with all, it's like pink background with all the little orange and pink kitty faces. Adorable. I got this from the line, which is yarn balls. And it says meow. I mean, how cute is that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I could not resist. I think I got a whole yard of this one. I don't know what I was planning. Like, why is this one a yard? The others are half yards. Um, <laughs> this is also from the line and it's an orange background with these little white illustrated cats and yarn balls and mice. And I think it's adorable. And I want to make myself a new project bag because I'm going to be starting the West Knits Mystery Knit Along on October 5th which is actually the day I go to Tulsa or Bentonville. So I need to make myself a bag so I can bring that project with me because I'm going to want to start it that weekend, even though I'm going to be doing fun girly things with my friends. I'm going to get knitting done while we're there too. I'm just putting it out there to myself. I'm going to be knitting. So anyways, I got those for a potential new project bag or several because I got a lot of fabric. Um, I also, also, I ordered myself some peacemakers. Um, thank you all for letting me know where I could get peacemakers in my last video. And, um, I have been stitching, I stitched that whole ca arranging cacti piece with my little peacemaker that somebody gave me at the attic. And, ugh, man, one, two, three stitch really packaged these up well. Um, I got a set of size 28 peacemakers from 123stitch. So I'm going to keep using these and seeing how I like them compared to my normal 28 Bowens. Okay, then from Fat Quarter Shop, I got my monthly club that I pay for, which is the NPI Silk Flosses. And this month, yeah, this is the September 2023 club, and these are called Berry Red. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, oh, okay. I had two things from last video that I completely forgot to show in haul and I'm showing them now. One of them is Liz Matthews fault. Uh, I bought this dimensions gold kit, the ornament, the full coverage ornaments that she showed in one of her floss tubes a few weeks ago. I just immediately paused the video, got on Amazon and bought them. I think it was only like $20 on Amazon for this full kit. Um, as Liz talked about, the flosses are not DMC, but she said they're totally fine. They feel totally normal to stitch with, but it's not like these aren't DM DMC numbering. These aren't like DMC flosses. It's like their own proprietary dimensions threads. And, um, it does come with a 16 count Ada. I, I mean, I know these are full coverage, so you won't see the fabric, but I don't, um, I can't imagine that I'll actually use it. I just haven't stitched on Ada in forever and just much prefer stitching in hand on linen. So yeah, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Um, oh, actually it says it's 18 count Ada. Oh, okay, so maybe I could use a 36 count fabric instead. Ooh, I'm excited. I'll have to look at like how many threads it calls to stitch for and all of that. I don't have big plans to start this right now, but I just couldn't resist. They're really cute. And in fact, um, my mom, bought this kit as well. And I know she's already started on one of them. I don't remember which one she started with, but next time I um, have her over, I'm sure she'll show us. So I got the dimensions kit. And um, the other thing I forgot to show you. So for Common Threaded Stitcher, that was an uh, Instagram event that I participated in back in August, early August at some point. Um, Kia B uh, set it all up. She is the organizer of Common Threaded Stitcher and she got some cross stitch makers to join us. And one of them was Brandy from Bestitch Me Fabric. And Brandy created a custom new color of fabric just for Common Threaded Stitcher. It is available on her website. I will link it down below. It is gorgeous. Um, I had to order myself a fat quarter of 40 count linen and it is called One More Reproduction. And here is what it looks like. Ah, oh, look how pretty. It is like the perfect neutral. Like really lovely, soft modeling. Um, 
I'm absolutely obsessed. I need to find a, like the perfect project to stitch this on. I'm just realizing that I bet this would have been really pretty with my floral motif sampler, but that's okay. Um, I will find something else gorgeous for this. So yeah, 40 count, uh, fat quarter. And then I also, she also created a custom hand dyed silk color. So Brandy also does hand dyed silks and it is called Bahama Coconut and it is a 10 yard skein and it is super variegated. Um, I'll show it to you on the fabric. So I had to get her new silk color too. So that is Brandy Bestitch Me. I will link her in the description box if you also need this fabric. Um, okay, I got my Laundry Basket Quilts Fat Quarter of the Month Club. This one is so me and so cute. Um, first, they sent a pattern called Mint, which is like a half square triangle pattern that uses all the fabrics that are in this month's collection. So you can see all the fabric colors there. Um, oh, wait, I forget. I always take the lid off this so it's easier to see. Here are the fabrics. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So this is the 20, September 2023 bundle. Um, okay, I think I'm on the last little bit of haul. I bought some yarn. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I bought two skeins of, uh, or I guess two sock sets from Log Cabin Fiber Company on Etsy. I will link them. This is like the softest, squishiest, like, oh, most appetizing um, sock yarn I've bought in a long time and I am obsessed. So Log Cabin Fiber Co. Um, this set is called Pumpkin Patch and you can see all of the creamy speckled goodness of the main skein and the little orange mini that goes with it. Um, yeah, fall socks. <laughs> I actually was going to start and knit a pair of socks for my friend who I'm going to see in two weeks. Maybe I still have time. Maybe I'll kick this up today and start a sock set for her. So it'll actually be her birthday. Uh, the friend we're going to visit in Arkansas, it'll be her birthday that weekend that we're there. So Ooh, maybe do I have time in two weeks? Maybe. I have to get that quilt done first before I do anything else. Um, oh my God. I'm obsessed with this yarn. And then this next set is gonna be a pair for me. And it is a self-striping yarn and it is called Haunted House. Um, how amazing is that? And so it has the same orange as its little contrast color, 20, min or 20 gram mini skein. And oh, yeah. I'm obsessed. This is, they're both the same sock base and they are called the OG sock set. And it's an 80-20 superwash merino wool and nylon. And it is 425 yards. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't even, okay. So this is actually a 115 gram skein. So it's 425 yards, 115 grams. So that must mean it's a slightly heavier weight sock yarn, actually. Interesting. I'll have to play around with my needle size. And then the mini, I thought was just 20 grams because that's usually how big minis are. This one is 38 grams. I could for sure get two normal adult size socks, I, like pairs of socks out of this, I think. Oh, that's exciting. Um, anyways, I really want to knit myself a pair of socks and I will probably start these sometime in October, uh, and have a little pair of spooky socks. So anyways, I think we have reached the end. That is all the haul, y'all. Yeah. I want to thank you all so much for checking me out, tuning in, seeing what I've been up to. Um, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.